Well, I hope you don't mind, but I would like to go ahead and get started, and it'll give us a little extra time maybe to address uh, individual concerns that you might have as we go through this process today. I am mostly interested in what are your concerns, what are your expectations, and how can we help to address those? Fortunately, we have one person in the audience today has been through a little bit of this before, so hopefully she can help a little bit um, in, in the facilitation as this works out. I'd like to kind of give you some idea of, of who I am, and I don't know why this thing is not moving. There it goes. Who am I? Um, I come from the corporate world, and I'm talking about one of the Fortune 500s. And in that, I was responsible for being trained in ISO 9000. Does anybody understand what that is? Industry Standards uh, Organization 9000 is the delivery, a consistent delivery of a product or a service across a broad spectrum. And as an auditor for ISO 9000, my goal was to confirm that the processes that were in place were being consistently followed. And when those processes fell apart, then it was my job to find out how to fit those, put those pieces back. Where, where did we come apart and, and begin to reestablish a consistency in that product? In my case, it was delivery of a service, in-home services. Uh, CQI TQM uh, is continuous quality improvement, total quality management. It is a medical uh, system. Uh, it came, came about as a result of my being an EMT. And, uh, and having that medical training also then gave me the opportunity to really delve into uh, the processes surrounding medical care. And so that's how that is. Six Sigma, I'm a brown belt in Six Sigma. And uh, that again is a process identification and solution method. And so each time that you look at these, you, you have to really kind of delve into when something does not work the way you expect it, how do I begin the steps to identify that and then begin to make those corrections? So an eternal quality auditor for a national corporation, a certified mentor and a facilitator trained in both, and developed and trained customer service skills throughout the West. I had a staff that worked from Sacramento to Los Angeles. I was also, while doing the, the training, and then uh, I was also responsible for a call center in Sacramento at, May at McClellan. Uh, McClellan, yes, correct. I had 300 there. Uh, we handled about 10,000 calls a day. So these are some pictures of training that I did throughout the West to just kind of give you some idea of what that is. But uh, you remember when uh, Hillbillies was redone here locally uh, with Restaurant Impossible? Uh, it was myself and my wife that stayed behind, in essence, to help them with those key pieces of uh, putting the, the attitude back together. Uh, how do you manage a business? And we both come from the restaurant industry. Um, I was uh, involved with a three-star restaurant called Hoffman House, and if you go into the cheese section of your local or, uh, grocery stores today, uh, you can still find Hoffman House cheeses. Uh, I also was uh, uh, involved with the eastern expansion of Denny's, based out of Chicago. And so restaurant operations and that type of uh, front, house, front of house service is something that's always been a part of what I've done, I've done. So what sets a large business apart from the smaller ones when it comes to customer service? Anybody have any ideas what that might look like? What can a large business do that a little business can't afford to do? Can hire someone. <laughs> hire <laughs> some. <laughs> hire somebody? What else, what else can they do? Well, a big business can hide a lot of stuff, can't they? They can hide behind that moniker. Uh, when you have yourself as the only sole proprietor of a business or you have one or two employees, everything is personal and firsthand. There is no policy and process and anything else you can hide behind. It's just you alone on that front line. So how you begin that process, how you handle that process is going to be very important. So let's look at making a leap. Smaller businesses have an advantage. The advantage is, is that they are able to be more responsive and they can respond more quickly to changes in marketing. When you have a situation involving uh, a, a large business, it's like trying to turn that big ship. In my case, uh, you know, where you're all over the western states, it's very easy for you to say, well, it's just too big to handle. It's too much to do. But in any case that we embarked on training, we had to provide something to the bottom line. That means that if, if we're going to do this, what are they going to get in return? Is it reduced recalls or callbacks? Is it reduced calls into the call center? 
how are we going to be able to save money at the, at the end of the day? And so being in a small business, though, you have the advantage to turn that around very quickly. So let's, let's look to the next question. What is the top skill, and Sue, please, <laughs> don't, don't help with this. <laughs> what is the top skill that your customer really wants? Out of any business, large or small? Feel important? Listening? And communication? Okay, you're getting closer here. Caring is getting closer. Empathy? Empathy? Okay, and somebody said understand. Somebody said, what was the other? Meets their needs? Personalization. Okay, and results and personalization. So let's just stay with what we've got here. Because there's a summary to this. There's a summary if you were to take all that and put it together. What do you think that might be? Put all of that together. I'll put it up on the board. Yeah. They want to know that you respect the fact that they are valuing your business enough that they want to have a relationship with you and your business. That's what they want. So we have to work at times very hard to put that at the forefront. When you have a customer and their respect, what else are you able to gain as a result of that as a businessman or business person? What's that? Yes. There it is. You've gained their trust. Now that you've gained their trust, you, they also have an expectation that you are capable of doing what your business says you can do. Right? It's very important to know that it is, it is a mindset. That's what you're talking about. So get the respect down. Now let's talk about some of the other traits that set a successful business apart. I want to erase this off the board here a second so that I don't have uh, conflicting stuff. What kind of things would set businesses apart? Now, we said that large businesses do certain things dif uh, differently than smaller businesses. We have more flexibility in the smaller businesses. What kind of things would you say? So you can help here if you'd like. Being responsive. What does that look like? Well, that looks like it's answered. Like if someone calls, they can reach someone right away, or at least somebody calls them back right away. They can reach someone quickly, and somebody's going to respond to whatever their issue, whatever their need is, or whatever you know, concern they may have. And what if you're not the one that's capable of responding? What if you can't deliver the whatever it is that they're looking for? Well, then I would refer someone else, or I could have someone else work with me and you know, set it up so that they can get the help they need even if it's not good. Okay. So in terms of being responsive, does that mean that I have to be instantly responsive? Somebody will contact you within 24 hours. Something reasonable so that they don't have to wait weeks 
to have their issues. Just someone who, who just is responding to them as quickly as possible. That's how I look. Okay. So a customer really isn't an interruption. They're not. Did you see me do something just now? Did you catch it? When you were talking, I was doing something. What did I do? You were wincing. I was what? Wincing. No. You moved. <laughs> I moved and I looked down. How many of you are in what I call CSR, and I know who is, are in what customer service work on telephones versus how many of you are in direct contact? How many of you do direct contact with customers in their face every day? Okay, be very, very cognizant as you're talking to customers that you're maintaining that eye contact, that you're maintaining that posture, that stance that you have, you have to have, and that when your phone goes off, what's the one thing you don't want to do? You don't even want to reach for it. Okay, don't even reach for it. If it goes off, it goes off. What about if another phone line rings in the, in the business? Do you reach for it? That's a, that's a conundrum, isn't it, Sue? Because the conundrum is you want to get to it within three rings. And if you, if you can't get to it, you may have to excuse yourself from that conversation for a moment to politely answer the phone and say, I will, I'll be right back with you in a moment. I think it depends, because some customers go, oh, do you need to get that? You know, they do. They do. Yeah, to go do that real quick. Especially if it's not a real critical conversation, they're just in there chatting. It's like, oh, yeah, hang on, I'll be back. Okay, cool. They kind of like allow you to do it. <laughs> allow you to do it. And to some degree, you will watch by their body language whether or not that is, that is something that is going to be permitted in that discussion. Watch them very closely because if they wince or they, they look at the phone, they're actually t telling you, please, <laughs> do something here. So it's very aware of what people are doing when you're talking to them. Now, now I know, for instance, I'm at a distance from you right now. Do you really feel that I'm connecting with you in this discussion? But if I was back over here and having this same conversation, are we really connecting? We're not, okay? But there is something that happens when I get into, and I know because you're closest, I'm just going to pick on you, okay? Uh, there's something that happens, though, that when I get this close, we're connected. But are we really totally connected? No. Okay, we're totally connected when I can get down here. I can get into the eye level in that conversation. But please understand that it's very important for you to always allow that three foot space that people have around them. Okay, that's personal space and you don't want to be in that space. So when you're getting connected with people, it's very important that you try to get into that eye level and you maintain that level throughout that conversation. Okay? So as we, we look at successful businesses and what sets them apart, we said responsive was one. What else did you, can you think of? The ability to perform what you say you do. Can I just use the word perform? You, you need to meet their expectation every time. Okay. Follow through, okay? What does that look like? Okay, so you are the, uh, the receiver of that first contact out there, right? And what happens if you are not capable of completing that discussion? What do you do? Well, the dreaded, we have to put them on hold, unfortunately. That's a dreaded, yes. So that it's clear all the way through that it's 
not. Well, I don't know. I just transferred it. Exactly. And that's what happens even in a lot of big businesses. When we were uh, on the phones, it was uh, very important that the person who took the original phone call stayed on the phone throughout the entire conversation, even after the transfer. And during the transfer, they would introduce themselves and the customer to the next person in the system and explain as they best understand what it is, the, the situation that they're, they're dealing with. So by doing it that way, then they allowed the customer the opportunity to allow them to be there or to allow them to be excused from the discussion. See, that's one thing that we, we seem to miss a little bit when we talk about customer services is that we don't realize who's in charge. The customer is the one that made the first contact. It's the customer's decisions when that contact is over. It's not ours. And when we try to make and push it to a specific result to try to get it over with, we may have gotten the result we wanted. In other words, we got, we got the performance level done but we didn't really get a good result. Because there's, there's always lingering things that sit in the back, and those are those, those contacts that you get later down the road, and you wonder, why am I getting this? What, where's this coming from? It's because we really did not re resolve the underlying the issue that that customer had. So if customers aren't interruptions, how can we ensure to them that they were, they're not? They're not interrupting us. I mean, I talked about, you know, don't look down, don't grab the phone, that kind of thing. What other what, what are things could we be doing? Just listening to them and keeping the eye contact if you're face-to-face. -face. <coughs> you know, while your posture and how your body language is. So that you're still engaged. My posture with you right now is not right, is it? Have you noticed that? Again, this is where you've got to start, you know, paying attention a little bit to where pe how people stand or how, they, how they're looking. But if I was truly to be engaged with what he just said, then my stance would be this way, not this way. Okay? And if you have a customer that's standing like this, then you're not getting, you're not getting through. And you need to realize that. You need to change the tact. Okay? You're saying if the customer's standing that way. Sometimes the customer will even stand this way. That's right. I mean, you are wanting a straight-on conversation. You want this communication to occur, but you've got a customer that's standing like this. Now what? You, move. you, have, you, to, move you have to move around to get back into that alignment. That's correct. It's very important to do that. Okay? In food service, timing's everything. Ever heard that before? Running a three-star restaurant, if you didn't have certain things on the table, picked up, whatever, at a certain time, it, it really created a bad experience because these people were paying big money to be there. In retail, timing is everything as well. And sometimes we think that we want to push an issue forward because we don't want to sit there and listen to the whole conversation. We already have the answer. And what happens? You cut off the person and you start answering the question that they haven't asked yet. Okay. <laughs> they get upset. They go, wait, that's what I want to ask you. Yeah, I haven't got there yet. I'm not ready for that. Okay. So let me ask you something about being uncomfortable. When you get into that situation, have you made that customer uncomfortable? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Because you, you weren't listening. You're just slowing down. And I do it all the time. You do it all the time. I finish the sentence and already on to the next thing. I already answered the question. Like, well, but it's usually employees, not customers. <laughs> okay. But the thing is, if you do that with employees, then you've set the expectation for them and how they do it with customers. It's, it's very, very important to know that if you are a manager or senior level, that you set the tone, you set the culture, you set what that looks like. Okay. So let's step through, for just a moment, a, a normal greeting. What's the most common thing you hear in a greeting today? When, when, when you just approach somebody or somebody approaches you? You shake their hand, tell them your name. Does everybody do that, though? No, not really. What's the most common thing you hear? I was just going to say, I think the biggest mistake is to say, how are you? Unless you really want to hear it. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. How are you doing today? Yeah, I, I, I try to, re you know, I work on repeating to myself, it's so nice to see you, or it's so nice to meet you. Okay. Because if, if you ask how they are, they might tell you. And if they wait, if you wait for them, that's very good. If you wait for them to ask that question, mm -hmm. you've already lost. You are the person that needs to ask the question first. And it has to be done friendly, sympathetically, if you want to use that term. But you need to be taking charge of that conversation up front. Um, Mervyn's, if everybody remembers Mervyn's years ago, Mervyn's developed what's called a 10-10 rule. That means that they wanted to be sure that everybody was, that was within 10 feet for 10 seconds was acknowledged. You still find that true in a lot of businesses. Calaveras Lumber, I know, does it. There's a lot of businesses that do that here locally. But it isn't a situation where you want to simply ignore your customers that are standing close to you because you're too busy to take a moment to do that. There's never a, t a good time to establish a relationship than that first time, that first contact. So understand that a greeting has to be something that is sincere. It can't be, is that for here to go, <laughs> like McDonald's, okay? People can, can read through insincerity, and they can read through programmed words. You have to find the words in your own personality that best reflects how you would like that relationship to go, okay? Just because everybody else does it doesn't mean that's what you do. You find it in your own way. But the greeting is the beginning. It's the beginning of the good or the beginning of the end. But it's one of those things. Okay? So, it all starts with that greeting. Remember that the customers are looking for your help. That's why they're there. That's why they called you. Okay? And in today's high technology world, where, I'll give you an example, because this just happened here. I went over to Orchard Supply because I was looking for a weed eater or a, a leaf blower. I looked on the shelf, there's a leaf blower. She's over there on her iPhone at Amazon.com comparing prices because I couldn't find anybody to help me. Okay? I can get it shipped free within four days for $15 less and I don't have to deal with whoever doesn't want to help me here. I'm gone. I think that's where a lot of the businesses like that, like stores, etc. I think that's where they're missing um, by downsizing the number of employees. They, they lose that connection with people and in the long run then people are going to shop elsewhere or... That Osh used to be awesome, man. You were there, there was somebody out there helping yeah. you, sucking you off in the door, they mm -hmm. knew their stuff and you know, then that, the, you know, Home Depot and Lowe's came in and it was like, well, that's horrible, so I'm going back to Osh. You know? Well, think about it, though. Every one of you has a business that other people have that same business. Mm -hmm. How are you going to set yourself apart? How, it isn't a question of money, folks. I'm going to tell you right now, it's not money. People will pay dearly for great service. They will. But what they won't tolerate is bad service. No matter how much you, pay, you want to pay get paid to do it. They won't. They'll move on. Yes? Well, one example I think of that, uh, where I think I, I set myself apart possibly from some other people that do what I do. Um, on, I went, I, um, we offer our services to, as an employee benefit to um, employees. And one lady, I met with her uh, a week and a half ago at the business. I had a little table there. And um, she said she wasn't able to sign up on the spot. But we talked later, I followed up with her. So one thing is I followed up, I took the time to get her phone number and call her. And she said, I'm really interested, but um, I can't um, sign up until Saturday, which is Halloween, Saturday morning. And um, can I meet with you? And I said, sure, I can meet with you. And then it turns out that her car was in the shop. And so I came to her house. <laughs> and it was actually my privilege, because I really like to not just meet people at their workplace, but actually got to meet her kids, I got to sit down with her. And then I said, please call me if you have any questions, any issues, anything comes up. The company can help you, but I really want to be your first contact. And she said, you know, I said, do you have my number? Because I was out of business cards. And she said, yes. 
um, do you mind if I program my phone? And I said, please do. I don't want to be one of those disconnected someone else. I want you to call me anytime you have an issue, and I'll respond as soon as I can. So she really appreciated that. So I went the extra mile. Take the extra having step. Her house, having her put me on speed dial. She needs to really be there for her instead of just saying, well, if you have a problem, just call this 800 number. Mm -hmm. you know, this mm -hmm. way she can call me, and I'm local. Excellent. You know, I'd like to recognize Walt Marcus because Walt owns a business here locally. And it's, it's a different situation when you're the owner writing those checks every month. <laughs> you're, you're paying those bills. And you know it, it really comes down to there's a lot of options out there. And if, if they are going to always remember who is it that did the best for me the last time that I wanted this done. And that has to always be in your mind. Because remember, again, technology starved. These people are so in, into their iPhones and iPads and all of that stuff that they're really starved for attention. It really comes down to that. And if you can just give them a moment of your time, that's the most precious thing we have in life. I just, I just know that. So uh, having that moment in, their, of, in time in their life really makes a difference. So let's talk about, for just a moment, making that initial contact in person. We talked about facing them at their level, right? And what, what do you do when you can't get to that level? How would you, how would you work around that? Do you mean physically on their level? Or? I'm talking about eye level. Oh. Eye level. Squat down for kids. You want to talk to kids? Squat mm -hmm. down. Yeah. If they're shorter, squat down. Uh, we had some... Taller. If they're taller? <laughs> That's great. That's great. Have you got? <laughs> do you have a little step stool? There you go. Exactly. Okay. call that needed knee belly button to belly button. That's what it's going to take. You're right. So, use their name. And remember something about them for future contacts. Every person that is in this room today, you know, we all will know something about each other when this is done. And it, it's developing those, those relationships. Because then when the difficult discussions happen, we've already got something there to work with. Make eye-to-eye -eye contact. Do not look away when you're talking to someone or they're talking to you. And the right words are powerful. We're going to go through this in a little bit. Have you ever had anybody do this to you when you're talking? What are they saying? What's that? Stop. I'm done. Exactly right. Stop. I'm done. What's the next bit of conversation you could have? Thank you. <laughs> you know, have a great day. I don't know what else to do with this because that's literally where it's at. Excellent way to put it. Excellent way to put it. See, that's the thinking that you've got to do, though, is how to put this into words. And use that 10-10 rule. It's always a good day. <laughs> okay? Not that, not, not that it is. And it's not always going to be. But the customers are not there to be burdened with our personal conflicts and our business conflicts and everything else that's going on in their world, your world. They're only there to be helped. And that's the only reason that they've, they desired to, to reach out. So what is required then of you in making connections with customers? What are they expecting from you? Let's, let's kind of review what that is. What are they expecting from you? In essence, right now, respect? pardon me? Are you talking about review, like respect? Yeah, let's kind of review it a little bit right now. Because in essence, I am your... I'm not your customer. You're my customers. Mm -hmm. That's reality. Okay? So what is it that I have to do then in terms of getting that connection? Make eye contact. Be personal. Make eye contact. Be personal. Remember names. Remember something about them. Okay? Be responsive. Be so all of those pieces have to be there. Right? We found... In our customer service center, we actually timed how long it took to, to run a particular call. Now, you figure thousands of calls a day, minutes are important, are they not? 
One word, the use of one word, extended the call by an, a minute and a half. Went from two and a half to four minutes. One word. Any idea? It's the word you. Anything, any idea why? Because it can be considered, now let, me, let me just kind of put it to you this way, and, and uh, I want you to think for just a moment, because I'm more using the word you here. Um, I'm on the phone, and I'm going to call in to wherever you work. Let's say you work at a bank. And I want you just to hear what's being said. So I'm going to turn around so you're not watching me. You're just kind of hearing what's being said, okay? And that is, is that I just stopped at the gas station to get gas, and my debit card isn't working. They said that it's been cut off. And you folks don't seem to understand that I don't have any cash in my pocket, and I don't have any ability to get gas. And you need to fix this right now. How do you feel? said what? Attack. That's right. You feel attacked because the word you is an attack word. I can't tell you how hard it has been for me to get that out of my vocabulary. Your is possessive. It's good. It's fine. It's that simple word that creates an attack. So you're saying don't use that word. Do not okay. use the word was, you. Yes. Head, yeah. Do not use the word you. People will feel attacked with it. A lot of things you could say, that's the one you don't want to say. Okay? And you always got a smile. And that isn't a false smile. Okay? But it is a smile. It's a sincerity. You've got to be sincere with what you're doing. So let's talk about making that initial contact on the phone. And I know Sue being part of Caltel, she's really into this, <laughs> this section because that's that's where she works. What does that mean to smile when you're talking? I was just gonna say you here. <laughs> Who works on the phone a lot? I know Sue, I'll, I'll get you one. Who wants this? <laughs> oh, I have plenty. You have plenty? <laughs> Because what I want you to do is in the next time that you have a phone conversation, I want you to actually sit there and watch yourself in the mirror. Because when you're talking in the mirror, the facial, the way your face is structured comes across in the telephone. If you're not smiling on the phone, people will not hear your smile. Okay, another important thing to remember is that when you're sitting down, and I'm going to sit right here for a minute and you're having a conversation on the phone, your tone, your voice, your inflection all softens up. Did you hear it? It softens up. So that if you want to be totally engaged with the customer, I'm sorry, you need to stand up. In fact, in my call center, whenever they got into difficult conversations, it was required. And I could watch who was standing in the room, and then I could patch in on that phone conversation and monitor its progress. Standing up makes a, that big a difference in terms of getting that contact, that interaction going. Because people are only going to be able to see your voice. Now, it's very important. If you can't remember names, because people do say them quickly, then you need to scribble it down on a piece of paper, very good, and use that as a reference point. But how many times do you want to use somebody's name in a conversation? Any ideas? Often, when you hang up. <laughs> 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 this just comes from experience. <laughs> So when they first give you the name, what's the next statement that you make? Repeat it back to them. What is the sweetest thing that you have in your life? Your name. Your name. Okay? But don't overuse it and don't abuse it. And why I say that is because you should be able to use it once during that introduction, once when you have the resolution agreed to, and once when you say goodbye. 
That's it. You do it more than that, even if you do that fourth time, I'm going to tell you it's going to change the outcome. It's going to sound canned. It's going to sound canned. Absolutely right. So be careful on using names. Stand when handling a difficult discussion and words are powerful. What kind of words do you think would give you the best result on a telephone? We care. We care? I. Us. What's that? I. I? Why do you say I? Well, because you're making a personal relationship with them. So I can help you with that. I will make sure that happens. I will follow through with it. How can I help you? How can I make it better? Thank you. Thank you. Because when you say we, all of a sudden, it's not just here. It's this big organization that I represent. Okay? You've got to bring it down to that personal level. And I is the only way you're going to get it done. So, if you have something going on, <laughs> yes, even on the telephone, it's always a good day and please smile when you're on the phone. So, how do we measure whether we built a relationship? This is one thing that I want you to always remember not to do, and that's to ask for feedback. The feedback is going to be, be coming in the form of the response, the resolution, and other methods. But if you ask for it, it's going to sound candid and sincere. Okay, sincerity. <laughs> do you like that? I hate that. Why? Because I'm busy. I'm busy. And, and if they're doing their job, they should know they're doing a good job. Thank if you. I bought their service or they satisfied what I wanted. But, when, you know, we'd, we'd like you to take our survey. Why? Who gives those answers? And they're not going to change anyway. No. I mean, no. if it's somebody I'm going to give a bad survey to, it's not worth my time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had an employee doing her job, mm -hmm. and the customer was happy. I said, oh, thank you so much. You've been very helpful. Oh, would you like to tell my supervisor that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> And, and when that's, I get to customer service, sometimes I'll ask if there's someone right. I could if speak to. Right, if it's customer generated, yeah. we want to hear it. But mm -hmm. if you're out peddling for it... Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's... You're going to do a survey, that, and I've seen this in so many companies. So you're a bigger company, you want a survey, and those are good to have. But put a prize to it. Make it worth something to mm -hmm. them. Because they'll go, cool, I'm giving a prize. If you don't put any prize in, I, I ignore them and throw them out. It's like, you know what, you guys are so cheap that you can't spend a little bit of money to make a little bit of incentive to get me excited about filling out that survey. Mm -hmm. I don't mind surveys because I want to give you my feedback, but I'm not going to give it to you unless you entice me for something. Correct, and correct. As soon as they don't give that, I don't ever fill them out. It's interesting you say that is, is that with the marketing, we had 20% uh, of the total score for in-home people was based upon survey responses. <laughs> That's kind of heavy, heavy weighted. And we were consistently running 92 to 95% positive but we weren't soliciting it and that's the key okay you should be you should be able to tell by the interaction that's going on within that uh, the, the audience share uh, that you're talking to whether or not you're getting the response you want and if you're not then you've got to go back and rethink how you're presenting that that package yes but don't solicit please don't solicit so when they share something personal with you, you got them. Okay? That's like hooking the big fish. <laughs> I'm serious. Sometimes it's a little too much. It's like half an hour listening to all their life problems. It's like, oh my God. Okay. Very good. Very good. So how do you, how do you trim that down? Well, you start diverting and finding solutions to what they're talking about, or sometimes you just have to make an excuse. And it's like, I'm sorry, um, I'm sorry you had those problems, and boy, I hope things work out for you. But, but that's um, as far as you I can take it. I got run to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not their doctor and you can't medicate them, right? Well, wife, so, so that's a problem. Okay. What did you say? Exactly. Uh, think of it this way, too. Are there times when you need to fire a customer? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, very quick. Thank you. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. What did you just say? Are there times when you need to fire a customer? Yeah. 
Well, okay. sometimes you, well, sometimes it, it, I think it's not, it, your time's valuable, and I'm not saying a customer's not worth your time, but there are those situations. Or if you can't um, service their needs, if you can't yeah, meet their needs or you can't make them happy. It's, it's, it go, goes a little bit different. It goes to the expense of maintaining or developing that continued relationship. That's what it comes down to. Can I afford in my business to keep this kind of thing going? Am I right, Walt? So that's where you need to know. Also, Dennis, it's, it's, it comes to sometimes the fact that that customer that you're going to fire is a detriment to your future customer base because they're not happy, so they're going to tell everybody else that they're not happy. So the sooner you get rid of them, the less that's going to happen. The negative is still going to be there. You're not going to change the negative. No but you can change how it impacts your business, your business profile. So um, they return a smile, builds relationships. They want to participate by push, purchasing goods and services, and they return as a repeat customer. Those are, those are relationship building things. And they're going to openly respond to, to new ideas, new products, new presentations that you might have. So they're always looking for how else can you help me kind of thing, OK? Or referrals. Okay, very good. Now the fun begins. We got through all the basics. How do you know when the expectation's not met? What's that? See Facebook, Yelp, uh, <laughs> find that really fast, The phone call, you people. They asked, you a survey, I can I had, <laughs> that's funny. I had somebody uh, recently with just kept repeating the word, you guys, <laughs> you guys, you guys. Uh, no, words, words having power, uh, it's very important that you carefully pick your words when the expectation isn't met. Understand that just the use of the wrong word at the wrong time or the wrong tone can build into something that just wasn't intended to be at all, right? So you've got somebody that their confidence is shaken. Um, where do you think they're going to, now you, you mentioned uh, something about social media. I have a personal story on this one. <laughs> Involves Boise, Idaho and a refrigerator. Okay. In 24 hours on Facebook and Twitter, we generated how many responses to a negative comment? any ideas. This is a national corporate business. So throw a number out there. It was thousands. It was 30,000 24 hours. It caused the company to hire on social media monitors. They, they handled, certain ones handled Twitter, certain ones handled Facebook. But you will notice that what they do in their responses on those sites, and if you're not on it in your business, you may want to kind of start paying attention a little bit. Is, is that they're not there to defend the company, defend the business. They're there not even to apologize. They're there simply to say, I hear that you have a concern or something going on in your world, and I'm available to, to help you with this. Here's my phone number. Here's how I can be reached. Here's my name. Please contact me. And that's what taking it offline, OK? But the last thing that a customer has is a complaint. Do you know we have a business right here in our community that has a complaint department? What does a complaint department mean to you in terms of an outcome? Something's not going right. Change the word complaint to concern. Is there a difference in outcome? If somebody's complaining versus voicing a concern, there's going to be a difference because your mind is already attuned to the idea of handling a concern. Dealing with a complaint, you deal with that totally differently. So you have to change the words yourself in that the customer's not complaining. They're simply voicing a concern. And how do I then respond to that? That's the power of words. Okay? By the way, it was a bank that has a complaint department. Yeah, okay. So 
let me give you some words. Because these are words that I found in my business that created some real problems. One of them was the word late. Running behind. So in other words, if you have a product that you're supposed to deliver at a certain time, and the customer comes in and it was supposed to be ready on Friday, and it's Friday and it's not ready, and you just sell, tell them, well, I'm, I'm running behind here and I just didn't get it done on time. What happened? Oh, their confidence in you goes down. Oh. Right. So if we take the word late, I, in other words, I'm supposed to be at this appointment at a certain time, and I'm, I'm going to be late, so I call to let them know I'm going to be late. Is that really the smartest way to handle that situation? And I'm going to say no. Here's how I want you to word it. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, I understand that we have an appointment or I'm supposed to have this product done on time or at this specific time. It's taking a little longer than anticipated. And I will be able to get it done by here or I'll be there by this time, etc. Is that okay with you? You want to get their buy-in that it is okay. Okay? Why do I say the word anticipated? Is because it says that you have some forethought in what's happening. You do not want them to believe that you are out of control or that you have no control. But as soon as you are aware that the deadline or the it's, is not going to be met, you want to be able to reach out and have that contact and get that agreement in place right there. Okay? We had a lot of problems with running behind. Um, have you ever had somebody, you're in a restaurant for instance, and they say, well, we're really busy right now. What does that mean to you? This just happened to us over in San Andreas here just a couple days ago in a restaurant. What does that have to do? Yeah. Still want to be fed. Yeah. yeah. I'm still a customer. I should still be able So my wife picks up menus and starts delivering menus to customers at tables. <laughs> Helping them out. Helping them out, right? So. What can I do to make my food come faster? <laughs> <laughs> you want me to start taking the orders for you? <laughs> okay, so what is a better way to state that? We're really busy right now. What would be a better way to think that through? So Thank sorry. you for not answering your phone, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, perhaps, oh, I got sidetracked. So, um, I did that intentionally. Oh, you, oh, oh yeah, ADD. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty lights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, to do something for them until you can. Oh, yeah, I no, you're, you're on the right yeah, track. Go ahead. To, to uh, like in the, in the instance of a, a restaurant, um, uh, let me get your menu and some waters, and I'll be with you as soon as I can. Bingo. Exactly Just, right. You know, you're important, and I'm coming. I'm going to help I'll you. I'll get there. Them. I'll get there. But they don't need to be told that and you're really busy right now. Yeah, yeah, they already know that. They don't want excuses, yeah. Exactly. Well, if you say something like, we've, we've had a bigger crowd than we anticipated, is that okay? You, you've got the word anticipated, anticipated. in there, so you're, you're safe. Yeah. You're safe. Okay. But the thing is, is that don't place a blame on that customer for the fact that they happen to be there yes. <laughs> when everybody else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, everybody else showed up too. How about, wow, our special's so good, everybody's here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. Sure. And that's, that's how you've got to take care of that one. Um, ever heard the comment, we're out of that item? What is that? What is that? Mean? Oh, you're shaking your head. I mean, you go to a place and go, or out of that, go, well, right next door to the market, go buy some. It's like, what? I mean, like, is it that hard to go buy some eggs or go buy some? It's like, yeah. sometimes it's like, oh, we have to get it from Cisco. So, no, you don't. Go next door and buy it. Yeah. <laughs> and I had to do that in a restaurant business myself. That makes sense. Yeah. You're never out of something. Mm -hmm. If it is, get it off the menu, <laughs> basically, is what happens. Um, that's not my department. So who, who am I supposed to call? You want me to hang up and call the same number back and hope somebody else has his phone? I mean, what do I do here? The department that can take care of those needs. Okay. 
<laughs> uh, what about, I just have no idea what you're talking about. You heard that one? How about, uh, you ever catch yourself signing on a phone? I got an expert over there. She, she knows the minute I do that. <laughs> but no, you can, you can actually sign on a phone and not realize you've done it. It's, it's that subtle. Uh, what's that? They are excellent for that. Did you? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that uh, your CSRs have almost become hypersensitive since we have had the discussion with them? On certain things, it's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> it is, yeah. because you never think about it. Right. You just are automatically doing these things. You're getting reactions, and then sometimes you don't know why those reactions happen. It's like, what did I do now? Okay. Like, if you're calling somebody that, you know, and then they think the phone's hung up, but not, you said, well, just wrinkle. Okay. Just wrinkle. Yeah, I was, you know, the cosmetics thing. And, and she was just really rude to me on the phone. And I don't like rude people. And I was, I hung up the phone. I said, well, just go wrinkle. And the phone hadn't hung up. <laughs> it wasn't anybody that I was ever going to talk to again anyway, but it really taught me a lesson. I had a... Because usually I wouldn't have a negative comment, but she was so rude. You, know? you just couldn't, couldn't help yourself. <laughs> I had a, a, a lady in one of my classes who was the manager of an insurance agency in Stockton, and she had one of her employees there with her. And she said that when the really rude and uh, nasty language and all of that happened that this the the her staff was just going off mm -hmm. and i said would you tolerate that from your children and she said no and i said then put on your mama pants and take care of yeah. it <laughs> okay because sometimes that's what it is, is that if we're managers or we're bosses, we will sometimes tolerate things from employees we never tolerate from our kids. That just baffles me a little bit, but it happens. Go ahead. The other thing is, I mean, we're all, I think, occasionally going to run into someone who's not happy. And it may yes. not even be in our control. It may be they had a bad day, something happened to them, and they're, or like in my, in my business, I tell people the coverage, this is going to cover it at 100%, but this part it will cover. I try to educate them ahead of time, but invariably they hear what they want to hear, so they get mad at me because something isn't covered, and I already shared it with them. So there's going to be people that are going to be upset. So for me, what I try to do, and I know I'm not always successful, is even if someone's upset at you, even if they're yelling, whatever, whatever they're reacting, how do I at least try to stay polite, try to stay uh, present and and try to try to not give back. And my, you know, I'm like they're cursing at me. I want to curse. You know, it's like it's like you want to you want to pay them back, right? That's my. I want to fight back. I want to fight back. But how how do, how can I at least stay courteous? Um, if I am able to hang on to my dignity and treat them with dignity and listen to them, because sometimes they just need to vent, mm -hmm. and still respect them. Sometimes it's happened where I'm able to turn it around and they can calm down, and then I'm listening to them. And even if I can't solve their problem, at least they're not leaving with, oh, you know, this person can't help me. Like, at least, at least the door open. How do you, okay. what do you recommend about that? Here's, here's what you need to understand is, is that none of the conversation that happens is ever a personal attack on you. And when you take it personal, you'll react personally. Mm -hmm. It's very important, though, that the one thing you always have to do when the person is venting, I'm going to just be crude here, shut up, mm -hmm. okay? I mean, I've had times where these people are on the phone and they're just ripping the business a new tale. And 
they're, they're, they're actually, I'm not responding. And they're going, are you listening to me? Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you care? Yeah, I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> but what you also don't want to do is say I'm sorry. That's a throwaway word. It means you don't want to discuss it anymore. You just want to get on to the resolution. You're, what are you apologizing for? <laughs> really, that's the question you have to ask yourself. You don't need to apologize. No. Or I'm sorry you didn't get what you were No. Expecting. Don't go there. So what do you say? And you can't even really go to I understand. Okay? Mm -hmm. That doesn't work either. But what you can do is say, let me get this straight. Let me see if I can feed back to you what, what's going on here, what, what this concern is. Give them the feedback when they're ready to <laughs> have it given to them. Okay? Not a moment earlier. But the best way to do it is to restate in your own words what it is that's going on. And let them agree that that is truly what's happening. Like, let me be sure I understand your concern. Yes, yes. And then, and, and then you can go from there to, I have some thoughts on how we might be able to, to resolve this. And how I might be able to help you in that resolution. And I know, and I keep picking on Sue only because she's, she's been right in the middle of these very tough discussions from time to time. So, so she knows what really I'm talking about. anything that your company, per se, can help them with? Good question. Let's, sometimes they, their, their expectation is something that you just cannot deliver. Let me, let me put this into a, a more of an O'Reilly situation so that you can think of it that way. You go to an O'Reilly's and you're looking for this little thing and they don't have it in stock. And what is it that they are going to tell you? Well, have you tried so-and-so at Napa down the street? Or did you check with Calaveras Lumber, right? Is that really good customer service? Yes. No. No. Yes. Not as good. It could be better if you say, let me check with them. What if I was to get on the phone as the person at O'Reilly's and say, I'm up at O'Reilly's and I've got this customer that's looking for this thing. Is this something that you have in stock? Yes, you do. Well, Joe's going to be down in just a moment, and he'll be down to pick it up. Wouldn't it be better for you to walk the customer to that solution than for you to send them to the solution? Good point. Uh, I'll give you an example at Walmart. When you're looking for something at Walmart, I don't go to Walmart. <laughs> okay. What do they do? When you ask for something, what is that person required to do? We're out. Take, it. Take you there. Take you there. You go to, you go to Calaveras Lumber right now, and I'm going to tell you they do that too. Mm -hmm. They take you to the spot, even if it's not in their department. Mm -hmm. means nothing. So that's the goal that you have to have and the mindset you have to have in resolving these issues is, is do you need to walk them to a solution. And the solution may not be your business. It may not be anything within the realm of what you can do. But it doesn't mean that you can't help them to own that solution. Exactly. Everybody. Exactly. He sent the, the Macy's Santa sent them to the other store or whichever way it was. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's really old. I'm, listen <laughs> I'm just listening to the conversation. It's quite all right. She said she hasn't seen that movie, and I'm like, shocked. <laughs> so, how you act and the timing in which you are going about these actions is everything here. You can say all the right words, but if you don't say them at the right time, they're going to say, yeah, they resolved it for me, but I didn't really like how that turned out. Okay? It's the but that you've got to watch out for, and that's all in timing. Now, owning a concern, whether you feel it's perceived or actual. Sometimes it's, you've heard the old terminology, perception's reality. There's a lot of businesses that have died because of bad perception. Okay? But they are the reality to the potential customers who may use that business. And if they don't feel that you really own that, then they don't want to participate. But if they remember that the last time that I went over to Walt's business and Walt did this for me, and it had nothing to do with his business, but he helped us. Am I going to think about him next time? Yes, I will. 
And that's the way we need to think about it when we're helping with these, with these concerns. This is an unfortunate one here. And this is where it comes down to, do we fire the customer or do we fire the policy? Okay? We have to make that determination of, what, is the, what did it cost me to put that customer at my door? There is a monetary value to that, and there's a long-term value to that. And what you have to ask yourself is, and this is for upper-level managers and owners, really, in this situation, is, is this a time when I want to throw out policy and save a customer for the longer term, or do I want to fire a customer and save my business for the longer term? And that's, that's the dilemma that you have to face. But employees, people who are on the front lines, uh, I, never, I never for a moment thought about them having to maintain, that's not policy. Those words were not in my discussion, okay? Because that's something for somebody else higher up in the food chain to deal with. Their job was to get a resolution. Yeah? Ever get into those situations where you said something about they're swearing at you or whatever and you just want to match wits, right? And you're not going to win. Do you mind if I use that in the future? <laughs> you know you hang up the phone sometimes it does disconnect and jeez. Yeah. I mean I'll, I still just I make sure. I don't. I don't know if she heard me. But I just have to, you it's know. It's very embarrassing. I just had to, to know that that's something I would never do again. So now I check the phone twice. Before <laughs> okay. So the bottom line is though, if your business is going to continue, you need to protect the brand. There's been a lot of money and time and heartache put into that brand. And at the bottom and the end of the day, that's what this is all driven by. So you need to show confidence in your products or services. Let's say, for instance, you have a product and it didn't meet the customer's expectation. What would you say to them? <laughs> yeah, the word I'm sorry got in there, didn't it? Yeah. It automatically wants to come into your head. No, no. See, I, I'm wanting you to start thinking about this. Even after you walk out of here today, you think about what you're saying and how you want to say it. So when a product or a service doesn't meet their expectations. See what needs to be done to make it meet their expectations. That's one way. We've got issues where people weren't happy, and I give all my employees up to $200 to give away. But what do you need to do to solve the problem? If the customer just wants a month free, give it to them. No questions asked. You don't have to nitpick them. Just say, hey, how about if we give you a month free? And they go, oh, great. That's fantastic. OK, I'm only one. I four days. remember that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll give you four days. This is no. dangerous in your own customer direction. <laughs> But what you don't want to be doing is throwing your products or services under the bus to try to save a customer, okay? They are what you are. They, that is what you represent. So those are the things that you need to protect. And if it's a case of having a conversation about what their expectation is versus what you have and whether those two meet, now that can be a good conversation. But that doesn't mean that you have to tear your product or service apart to get there. It's education. Mm -hmm. And they don't even realize it. Right, but if, and you know this, if you're, you know, they'll call you and say, your service is slow. How many devices do you have? Right. Oh, I've got a party of 12 kids over here. Oh, but, but I only have time. my computer and Netflix. Well, they're gaming downstairs, and there's 15 cell phones. But that shouldn't have anything to do with it. Okay. <laughs> you agree with that? No. Oh, yeah, they create future customers. So those referrals are very important. And whether or not you've met their expectation is going to determine whether or not they refer you to someone else. They're certainly not going to uh, create a ding on their own personality saying, oh, well, go try them because they'll mess with you like I, they messed with me. Okay, that's not going to happen. So you just have to realize if you can't provide what they're looking for, I want you to commit yourself to taking them where they need to go. You may not be the answer today, 
but you very well will be the answer in the future for that individual when they think about that experience that they had with you at that moment. Yes. Do you see the advantage? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that doesn't make the other party feel on the spot or okay. No. You start and again you need to start developing relationships with other people who can provide those additional products or services and, and know that you're not putting them on the spot. You're simply handing someone off to them that could you know that could do a better job in that area. Okay. So probably grateful for the referral. And grateful for the referral. Right. We're a small community here, folks, and we have to really do what we can to help each other. And not everybody's going to be 100% on everything. But if we know we can reach out to each other and, and help work this through as a community, as a whole, it will work out. You won't said something a minute ago about if, if you make someone unhappy or whatever, that you know, they'll tell everybody. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, if, you, if you make them happy, they'll tell all their friends. If you make them unhappy, they'll tell everybody in the world. Mm -hmm. you know. yeah, it's, it, it's a multiplier of times 10. It really is. That's why I think it's worth it, if possible, if at all possible. If you can please someone or go the extra five up for someone, even if they're unhappy or unreasonable, just do everything within your power because my power, because that person, number one, may come back to you. Number two, may I want them not to say horrible things about me and my company to everyone they know. And at least on my end, I know I've done everything I could in my power Correct. to put my, my big girl pants on. <laughs> when I want to punch mama them. Pants. <laughs> Your mama well, pants, so like, I like that. There's a little girl in me that wants to punch them, I'm like, get away from me. But then, you know, as an adult, I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> you know, if you really can do that extra mile, it's because the easy, the, the good, the, Good customers, for, you know, the ones that are appreciative and friendly and easy going. Those are easy to maintain, right? Mm -hmm. What if we take on our Chelsea challenge? How do we handle the top customers? If we can step up to the plate and we can handle them well, then it could make a difference for them. It could make a difference for their friends, the people they know, mm -hmm. and in our business, just by stepping up. That's the extra step. And that, that is going to make the difference. I mean, when you, you're dealing in, in my situation with like 10,000 calls a day, uh, you know, what's the percentages, what's the odds of how many times you're going to deal with people that are not, you haven't met their expectations and you need to kind of reestablish the relationship again and trust and all of that has to start over. It's, it's, a, it's a different world and it's a much quicker world. But when you're in a small business, remember that it's magnified many times over and very quickly because you, you're dealing with small amounts of, of things out there. So the impact is greater. You can, you can hide a lot of dollars in a big business. You can't hide pennies in a small one. It just and doesn't work. And a small local, community, because this is relationships. Like, you know, in another state, that's one thing, but if it's somewhere local, then it's right. more so. Right. Is there anything else that you folks would like to discuss? And I use the word you again. <laughs> before we, we leave today. Any thoughts? Um, I mean, just one thing I would we've seen really from the uh, Buke fire was the uh, power of uh, social media. Um, we had uh, one of our customers posted because we were, anybody who had lost their house, we just gave them all new equipment and free service. They posted it on, on Facebook and it got over uh, 1,670 uh, likes. Wow. And we were just blown away. We're like, whoa. And I remember my office manager had taken the call and I was just telling her, right, while she was talking to them, I said, yeah, this is what we're going to do for those people. We're going to take care of them. And she did all that, we didn't know about it. Austin somebody says, hey, did you know you are on this forum? And did you get a thousand likes? And I got on there, four days later, it was 1,500 and 1,600. It's like, whoa. And then we got all those people wanted service now. 
Yeah, you, unfortunately, consumers are all about <laughs> And you may feel that you're a small business here, any of you. You may feel you're a small business, but realize the impact of social media and how quickly things can, can turn Be around. Really Be very careful. I would only suggest on social media that all of your comments be positive. Mm -hmm. If you can do that, it would be very helpful. Um, and that if it needs to be a, a serious conversation, take it offline and reach out. Call the person up right away. Call them up right away and get, get into that discussion, okay? I agree with that. Okay. Because people tend to vent their dirty laundry on social media. I'm like, really? You yes. Yeah. It's because they can hide behind that iPad. <laughs> right? It's very emboldened. <laughs> Just a quick example, I, there was a, a, there's a young woman that I know that I was thinking, I really should call her about starting a, a business with, with Mary Kay. And I was on Facebook catching up with my friends, and um, I do more reading than posting. And I ran across one of her posts, and she was using dirty language, and, da, 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 and I just thought, no, that's not the image that that I need. You know, and mm -hmm. I just said, no, I'm, not gonna, I'm just not going to offer it to her. I mean, if she came to me and asked me for it, then then I would be in a position where I could say, well, you know, I noticed. You know, I, I, no, I wouldn't say I noticed your post. I would say this is the way we do, you know, we have to really watch our image on social media. So in training, I would cover it. To watch the I, yeah. It's interesting you say that. It's because in the corporate world, I hired literally thousands of people. And I will tell you that it was social media was a very key part of our research on personalities. Find out a lot about the person. Yeah, find out a lot about the person there. It's not LinkedIn and it's not those other places, it's social media. So they can be real. Right. And they show their real face. Well, I hope this has been helpful to you today. And if you want uh, to have a more personal discussion with your business or something that you feel is an issue uh, or a concern, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to Economic Development. We'll be more than happy to provide the time and the expertise uh, to help work that through. So I appreciate your time and attention, and uh, hopefully this is going to make your business a better business in Calaveras County. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. much. Did the survey you need to fill out? That's what I was going to ask. <laughs>